That's the back of my Chevy Impala. It's fitting. Yes, I know the tint's fucked. All right, so step one of installing the diesel heater in the Jetta. This is where I'm gonna mount it. Obviously the uh, intake and exhaust pipes will be plumbed, plumbed through the floor. Now, right there isn't the best spot underneath the car. So what we're gonna do, I'd like to have a big hole. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna build a, a box sort of thing to mount it to, uh, and then just put only the intake and exhaust pipes through the floor, not cut a great big hole. So anyways, this is gonna be mounted here like this. And I chose to put it here, because um, originally what I wanted to do is so I wanted to put the fuel tank against this nice big flat surface. There's steel in behind here that I, you know, a couple self tappers, it would have been perfect, except for the filler cap is then up under here, and it's just gonna be too difficult to put fuel into, and it's gonna make a mess. Um, plus, if the unit's sitting over here, uh, this is the tire, uh, spare tire well, uh, so I have no way to exhaust, uh, into do the intake and exhaust. So what we're going to do here is just build a bracket uh, to mount onto the tank, and then L-shaped at the bottom, uh, just screw it to the floor of the car, and we'll kind of figure out a way to make it all work uh, so that I'm still going to be able to get my spare tire out. And the nice thing about that too is I can bring this up a little bit because it has to be up um, for the spout we have to install on the tank it doesn't come with it installed because you can you know you basically install it this way or on this side because of the mounting holes so we're gonna bring it up and set it about probably about like that um, the other thing I could actually do still possibly too is make something to still mount it to the side there, which would actually give me more access to get to the spare tire if I ever need to. And of course, then my, my filler neck is nice and easy to get to. So here's where the spout will go on if you're using this side, which is what we're using. And if we were using, if I had to go the other way, it would be right here. So leave that, just leave that there. We don't need that anymore right now. Close the trunk now that we got a plan. Let's put the spout in. Shush. <laughs> All right, here's my nifty new workbench I made. It's pretty good and solid for what we need. Not so bad. Got some sheet metal coming to put over it. Um, for welding so I can weld on it because I got my welder just up here to my right uh, and I got a plasma cutter coming and so on so that'll be sweet looking forward to that there's the all the kit so I'm going to mount it like this so that that's actually like perfect so I can probably thread that in if I were to drill that if I drill that hole I can probably thread that in pretty tightly. Getting it in there is going to be a bit of a bitch, but anywho, can you see? Can you see? Oh yeah, you guys can see. All right, so I'm not going to go right up to the middle um, because there's the the forming is there. We'll call it the forming. I don't know what the hell we're going to call it. There's an idiot fucking name again. There we go, we only get one shot. I'm just gonna kinda Yeah. So I don't know what we should do if we should just kinda like drop this in and shake it around until we get it. Um actually what we could could take a coat hanger, which I don't think I have any out here, or mechanics wire, which I did have some out here. I just actually noticed there's a bit of a burr in the spout, so we can look at that. Beautiful. Uh, I had a roll of mechanics wire. All 
All right, so I got just a piece of wire here. That all it wants to curve, of course. Try and run it up. So now I just try. I'm trying to uh, attach the spout to the wire um, strongly enough that I'll be able to pull it in. I think by the way I'm going to do that, so I'm just going to strip a little more insulation off here. <laughs> just pull the fucking wire. Out. Son of a bitch. <sighs> that time put a curve on the end so it doesn't pull through so easy all right so what we'll do is we'll just take a few strands of wire pull them to the side and then we'll twist the rest like so slide the pipe or the spout over and then wrap these wires that we pulled off to the side around it tightly and it should ideally you should be able to pull it up to the hole and get the spout out like that and then easy as pie so now that we're done with that we'll grab this and it's a tight fitting hole but if we pull it uh, and turn it I'm hoping yeah see it's catching it's starting to thread uh, that we can um, essentially thread it in to uh, to the tank. I'm sure this isn't very strong, so I'm not going to set these waste grips very tight at all. Just like that. Just enough to give it a bit of pull and a turn. And now it's already threading itself, so that's perfect. Uh, we got the O-ring on there. We'll just go like that. Perfect. Then we got the O-ring for this side. I'm going to put a little bit of uh, dielectric grease on there, or white grease. Just like that. And then that looks to be about a, I'm going to say 14 millimeter. Bingo. Tighten it down. Just want to make sure that the O-ring's not going to puke out the sides. We want it to go into that recess as much as possible. Now we're spinning the entire spout, so I'll hold it with uh, gently with the uh, vice grip. Beautiful. And it's spinning in the vice grip a little bit. That's okay. I don't think we need to go any tighter than that. Should be good. So there we go. The spout is installed. Lovely. So that's that. Stay tuned for part two. Cheers, guys.